Welcome back everyone. Today's video we're going to get back to the basics of people pleasing. I speak a lot about people pleasing and I don't think I've ever set aside a clear definition of what it is and what a people pleaser is. I've had a lot of people resist my implications that they are a people pleaser. They don't seem to realize that they are one. So hopefully in this video, by the end of it, you'll know whether or not you are. Let's start by having a look at what a people pleaser appears to be, the surface level representation. They can be fun to be around, easygoing, helpful, nice, pleasant. You generally have a comfortable, pleasurable emotional state in their presence, or at least they perceive themselves to create that in others. They're non-confrontational, they're loving and supportive, they consider themselves to be non-judgmental. They generally fit the picture of meeting all the virtues of society. They're a good person, and that's how they appear on the surface. Sometimes they're the only ones who actually see themselves this way because they're quite delusional, and other people see them as nasty or vindictive or petty. But most of the time, they are actually perceived that way by other people. They work very hard to please others, and they're usually quite good at it. Most importantly, especially for the people watching this video who think, I'm not a people pleaser, I'm just genuinely a good person, that's the number one thing they often have in common, is the idea that the way they're being is honest, it's real. This is who I actually am. Despite that niggling little kind of digging at the back of your mind saying, no, you're not. While some people are genuinely like this, this is their natural personality being played out, at least some of the time, most others, it is secretly a controlling strategy. Pleasing is in fact a manipulation tactic. It just so happens to be something that other people approve of. In fact, that's why it's so effective. But that's the real difference between, say, a confidently generous and kind person and a people pleaser. They might do the same behaviors, but they've got very different reasons for doing it. The confident person is doing it because it's the right thing to do according to their values. The people pleaser is doing it to control your emotions. Now, a people pleaser will often lie to themselves about this hidden strategy. It's very hard to live with the guilt of being a manipulative person who tries to please everyone to get them to stay under control emotionally. So you'll tell yourself a story about how you're doing the right thing, how you're sacrificing yourself, for example, or how this is aligned with everything you know to be a good person, even if you feel like you have to force it and other people seem to benefit from it, so it must be good. You'll find you have to justify the behavior to yourself. The thing is, if it was genuine, you wouldn't have to justify it. It would just be real for you. And of course, as we'll go into, you'd feel good about it all the time. So people pleasing is any behavior designed to try and please someone with the hidden intention of controlling them. It's what I call giving to get. It appears to be very giving behavior, but it's actually an attempt to get something from the other person get their appreciation, get their recognition, get their love, get their money, get their sex, get something, validation, whatever, approval, get something that makes you feel better. It's kind of like fishing. You're throwing out bait and sometimes even you can't see that there's a hook in it. You're trying to reel in something bigger than the bait you threw out. And that's the intention behind people pleasing behavior is to get something from someone else. It's not really about giving to them. That's really kind of like a bank giving you a loan. They're not really giving you money. They're getting money from you. In case at this point you're still thinking, but I'm not trying to get something for myself. Here's some of the things that people pleasers are trying to get. See if you recognize any of these tasty rewards as things that you're trying to chase. Recognition. Appreciation love, sex, avoidance of confrontation, uh, feeling like the hero who saves or fixes other people, reputation as a nice person, getting owed something in return, sense of control over your emotions and over the emotions of other people, forcing people to like you, 
keeping things smooth and easy to manage, and reducing social anxiety. These are but a few of the rewards that come from people pleasing. None of these things come with the intention of really making somebody else feel good. That's the story you tell yourself. But really, it's you enjoy them feeling good. This is really about you. This is about you trying to make yourself emotionally comfortable in a social situation. This is why people pleasers are often worse with the people who genuinely love them and care for them than they are with complete strangers. Because they don't have to try so hard with their genuine connections, you know, their parents maybe or their partner. But watch a people pleaser treat a stranger better than they treat their own kids. Because a stranger, they have to work for it. Confident people also do nice things for a reward, but the reward is internal. They're impressing themselves. They're living by a code of honor or a set of principles. They're doing what they believe to be right. And you know it's different because a confident person will do these behaviors even if they knew it would upset somebody else. And that's where a people pleaser never goes. Unless they're trying to be nasty and vindictive, which is the dark side of the coin for people pleasing. But generally, a people pleaser would consider the act a failure if the other person wasn't pleased. If the other person didn't end up in a pleasurable, comfortable, emotional state. Whereas a confident person will do the right thing even if it pisses everybody off and makes everybody hate them. People pleasers will never risk their own reputation to do the right thing. It's always got to make other people feel good. Or at least nearly always. The main difference, if you're still wondering whether or not you're a people pleaser or you're genuinely generous, do you need other people to say thank you? Do you need other people to recognize you? Do you have to be appreciated for this behavior? Could you do it anonymously and still be equally rewarded? If you need other people to respond in some positive way for you to consider it to be worth doing, you're a people pleaser. In my latest book, The Naked Truth, I've got a whole massive section on people pleasers. And in particular, I have a section called The Bullshit Beliefs. And these are all the beliefs that people pleasers have that keep them trapped in this miserable universe of trying to keep everybody else happy and comfortable. So I'm going to quickly go over those beliefs now to give you a sense of whether or not you are one. Basically, if more than half of these beliefs feel like something you believe in, then you're probably a people pleaser. Number one, other people benefit from my self-sacrifice. The belief that if you harm yourself, like bear the burden of helping other people at your own demise, you know, sacrifice your own needs to give to other people, you think that that's good for them. If you believe that, it's a people-pleasing belief. The truth is, if you take really good care of yourself, that's what's best for everybody else. Sacrificing yourself is just a way to try and grab sympathy from people. Number two, it's good to make other people happy. The idea that happiness is the only emotion that's any good, and your job as a people pleaser is to bring people to happiness as often as you possibly can and as consistently as you can. You shame the other emotions. You try to prevent people from having those other emotions like anger or grief. You try to fix it, and you only allow people to have happiness because that's the one you're comfortable with. In reality, a confident person lets everybody feel whatever it is they need to feel and doesn't interfere. Belief number three, the only other option is to be a complete asshole. People pleasers are really dichotomous. I can either be really nice or really nasty. There's nothing in between. There are either nice people like me and there are jerks. And that's the only type of people that there are. They refuse to admit to a nuance, uh, acknowledge that there is a third position where you can be generous and kind and loving, but also assertive and even ruthless when it counts. A person who's got a mixture of hard and soft traits is usually much more real than a person who's got nothing but soft traits. Number four, this is who I really am. The people pleaser has spent so much time pleasing others that it's like a method act of becoming the character that they're pretending to be. Essentially, the people pleaser is so consistent with their pleasing behavior, they think, well, this is me, even though it's forced and fake and always has been. There's a line I quote from Lamb of God, uh, Randy Blythe, in my book. You can tell the same lie a thousand times, it doesn't get any more true. 
Just because you've been fake for years or even decades doesn't mean that it's now real. You're just really, really fake. Belief number five, I'm basically an honest person. It's amazing to me how many people pleasers actually think of themselves as an honest person. Despite the fact that they're hiding what they truly think and feel a majority of the time, and quite often directly lying to create a falsely positive impression with people, they seem to believe that because they please other people, their behavior is therefore good. And if it's good, then it can't be dishonest. And therefore, whatever they're doing must somehow be honest. It's a complicated little mind game. I've seen many of my clients play it to try and convince themselves that they're a good person. Because you can't be a good person and a dishonest person. So they have to try and talk themselves into believing that they're honest. No, you're not. Not even a little bit, really. Number six, I'm non-judgmental. Yeah, actually, you are. You're incredibly judgmental of other people having emotions that you're uncomfortable with. You're probably a perfectionist who's too hard on themselves. You probably hold people to different standards depending on how you feel about them. And on and on and on. You are an incredibly judgmental person. But again, it doesn't fit in with the I'm a good person narrative. So you tell yourself you're non-judgmental, but you probably spend a majority of your time thinking quite negative things about other people and yourself. Belief number seven, one of the most powerful ones, life should be fair. People pleasers have this karma-like belief in fairness. One of the reasons they're so nice to other people is they believe that there should be a return on that investment. They believe that everything should be balanced out. That's why they'll get incredibly disappointed and upset with you if you don't reciprocate what they're giving to you. If you don't say thank you when they do something nice, they'll sulk about it because they believe everything should be fair and balanced. In fact, they think everything should be tipped in their favor, but they don't like to admit that to themselves. It's one of the most devastating beliefs because life is certainly not fair. Thanks to death and the laws of entropy, you're starting on a negative. The world's against you. The universe is trying to kill you every second of the day. Oxygen itself is a very slow-acting poison. No, the universe is not fair, certainly not by your standards. And the sooner you accept that, the more you can enjoy the life that you do have. And the final belief, the most weird one, and this is the one that used to rule my life, everyone can like me. This idea that if you're just pleasing enough, if you just nail it, you will be totally likable. There'll be no one out there who will reject you or hate you or talk bad about you behind your back. Now, there's an obvious fallacy with this belief. There are some people who are going to dislike you because you're a people pleaser. They'll see right through your act. doesn't matter how manipulative you think you are. There's always somebody who can see through it. And they'll hate you for doing it. Then there's going to be the person who hates you just because they think you're too tall. There's going to be the person who thinks you stole their job. There's going to be the person who doesn't like the way you walk. There's going to be the person who is fucking crazy and just hates people at random. There's no way you can make everyone like you, even if you are really, really pleasing. Even people like Jim Carrey have people who hate him. You know, He couldn't be more pleasing. Once you accept that not only are some people going to dislike you, in fact, a vast majority of the population is not a great fit for you. There's actually a sense of peace that can come from it. You don't have to keep putting on this act. You don't have to keep pretending to be okay with everything. You don't have to play the easygoing guy. You can just be you and say whatever you think and feel. And some people will love you, while the rest just won't want anything to do with you which is actually a relief because that's less acting that you have to do. So one of the key questions I get, is it really bad to be a people pleaser? I'm going to go with yes, I think it is. If bad means low well-being, low self-worth, shitty career, terrible relationships, including bad and superficial friendships, just a general increase in misery as time goes on, yeah, people pleasing is bad. A little act of people pleasing doesn't look bad if you look at it individually. If you're like, oh, I just agreed with my boss so that he wouldn't fucking give me shit in the meeting. It doesn't look that bad. But when you step back and you see the entire life of being full of shit all the time to try and control people's emotions and seeing your self-worth just slowly fade away as you get older, you'll realize actually those little acts are very significant 
Each time you do them, it's like having a little sip of poison. Eventually, you become totally toxic. And at the very least, it's exhausting to try and please everyone, isn't it? You know it is. You wonder why you have insomnia. You wonder why you have chronic anxiety. You wonder why you have these bouts of depression. You wonder why you have to drink to socialize. Because you are fucking worn out trying to control everyone all the time. I'm telling you, there's better ways to live. Being honest is not worse than that. You can change. In fact, you can go back to what you really are. You're not really losing yourself if you stop people pleasing. You're finding yourself. And essentially, it's about not doing anything that is defined as people pleasing. I did a little exercise with myself that really helped, which was I'm not allowed to do something nice unless it's genuine. And the way I sort of figured out whether or not it's genuine is I knew I wouldn't care if they didn't even notice that I did it, right? If there was no reward from anyone else for doing it, and I still wanted to do it, and I still thought it was the right thing to do, and I didn't expect anything from anyone, then that's a genuine piece of behavior. But if I wasn't sure that that's why I was doing it, if I'm like, nah, I think if this gets rejected, I'll feel bad, or if they don't say thank you, I'm going to be pissed off, then I just wouldn't do it. I went through this kind of transition period of doing a lot of nothing for a while because I couldn't trust my own intentions. And I was shocked to see how much of my behavior is coming from the people-pleasing intention, a vast majority of it. Nearly everything I did socially was designed to please other people, even to the extent of like the career I chose or playing in a band for 20 years or even getting tattoos. I started to realize, man, none of these things have been done for pure value reasons. I've always done them to try and impress somebody else. And I just stopped doing it for a while. And that was the beginning of my journey to confidence. So that's what it means to be a people pleaser. If you want help, if you if you think you have been described in this video and you're fucking sick of it and you want to know what being confident and genuine without losing any of the nice stuff feels like, then get in touch. Dan at Brojo.org. I can help you. I've helped hundreds of people. I've helped myself. It's actually a fairly straightforward process, though it does say, take some time and it will be uncomfortable. But if you're willing to pay that price, then within the next couple of years, you can become the person you were always meant to be. And I fucking promise you, it's better than being a people pleaser. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share the video around if you liked it. And I'll catch you all next time. Cheers.